Hi guys, we're back with sessions 43. This one is called What's Happening in the ER. And as a nurse, some people have never really experienced working in an emergency room. I've listed some of the topics that might be of interest to you, and there are others as well. If you would go to the clinical settings step by step in dearnurses.net, we're going to talk about the emergency room, triage, and the role the nurse plays, the golden hour hypovolemic shock, possible sepsis, eye injury, and febrile seizures. So let's get started. <clears throat> now, when you work in the emergency room, it's not everyone's responsibility. There's someone assigned to triage patients, and the triage nurse has a very grave responsibility prioritizing. Above you'll see a code blue happening. If you had a code blue happening, you'd know that would take priority, which is a cardiac arrest, over the patient who has a broken wrist. Not that that patient doesn't matter, but you know that the heart, if it stops beating, you've only got limited time before something can be done. A broken wrist can be mended in a lot longer time. So that is the role of the triage nurse, prioritizing. Now let's move on to uh, what you might see as the day progresses. You have a patient here, Tom, he was out all night drinking with some friends. After a drinking binge, he attempted to drive and struck a tree. Someone called 911 and paramedics arrived on scene. This is during the first hour of stabilizing a patient like this, it's called the golden hour. And this is the most important hour with trauma patients. Dr. Adam Cowley described it as the most important time and airway management is extremely important. If you do not manage that airway, it doesn't matter how hard you've worked on that patient. What ultimately happens, you may stop that patient breathing. So your first priority would be airway management. And we'll talk about that same patient, what you might find in a patient like that. Now this patient has what is called possible hypovolemic shock. And what would you expect to find? A decrease in oxygen saturation, a decrease in blood pressure, rapid respirations, rapid heart rate. How about uh, cool, clammy skin, decreased level of consciousness? These are things you would look for if you had a patient come into the emergency room demonstrating what we just called a trauma. Possible sepsis. This patient has very high fever, and what is suspect is he has a hot abdomen from previous surgery. These are the things you look at, a possible septic event. Then let's take the eye injury. This patient was pulling a box off of a shelf and injured his eye. He arrives in the emergency room. Well, injury to the eye, you don't have unlimited time again, especially if you have things like chemicals that you know, it went to the eye, you would have to act very quickly. Do an assessment, let the doctor know, and let him... There are ways in emergency rooms where they have standard orders for flushing, flushing out whatever chemicals are in the eye so that you prevent damage to the cornea. So take the time to go to dearnurses.net, the clinical settings step-by-step, step, of course, and that's Chapter 7, and that should help you in finding out more. And now we have the child with febrile seizures, well, I've encountered that situation where a child came in and had a very high fever and very shortly thereafter started seizing. And the doctor was there, thank goodness, and we had to act very quickly, cooling that patient down with, with just icy water and some cold wet blankets, giving oxygen, and the temperature dropped very rapidly. And, of course, the doctor orders more stuff like fever medication. Every emergency room has its own standard orders, so don't follow me. Follow what the doctor tells you to do. And, again, I emphasize, if you go to dearnurses.net, Chapter 7 of the clinical settings, step-by-step, step, you might get more helpful information. But, again, regardless of what you see, always follow your institution's policies and procedures. Some of the topics you'll find in a day at the ER which will be very helpful for the person who's never worked there. is chest pain and shortness of breath, patient with febrile seizures, a pregnant woman in preterm labor, patient with a wrist injury, a trauma patient in hypovolemic shock, septic shock, spinal shock, and eye injury. So I hope you've learned something from this. We've also got information there, more information on the golden hour, 
and the role of the triage nurse. I hope you've learned something from this and stay posted for more clinical information. Have a good week.